they've gotten to the habit of recording this after the morning, like in the afternoons, which means my favorite stuff. Um, yeah. But anyways. All right, y'all. Today, let me just fix myself here. All right, y'all. Today was an incredibly inspiring and insightful day, and it feels a lot like the funk is behind me. Before I get started, though, let me just remind you that this Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 30th, we're bringing you another episode of Mass. Come join us in our virtual audience as we dress up in our Halloween costumes and chat about our favorite things with actor and TikTok superstar Spencer Mumford. Mass is one of the highlights of my month as it is a time to check in with each other and you all. And sometimes we chat about the topic of the day, sometimes something's super deep, sometimes super light, but always entertaining pandemic has been rough that is a word in and itself but what i love about mass is a connection where at the end of it all we share our different views and what we learned what we took away and what made us laugh or in this episode what are some of our favorite things so friday at 5 30 log on to facebook.com slash let's go to mass or better yet visit the facebook page and get a ticket to join us in the virtual audience all right now that we have that out of the way, I noted the past few days in my calendar because the first line of defense in battling, battling negative self-talk is evidence. So when this hormonal rebalancing happens next time, I can remind myself it's a cycle and it won't last forever. That's just my stomach cramping. The cramps don't feel like death. The, why am I talking about that? No, look, the feelings sometimes feel like death at times, but that's hyperbole. Bling, bling, then I do something because that's the goddess in me. That's just how my mind works. Could have had a... Look, yesterday, though, getting through the tail end of it was a bit tough. The whole baby thing came back. That's always fun. I'm like, oh, I want a baby. Do I? Do I? I don't know. Enough of sad luck. love songs, though. Today was wonderful. I went to work, but I do use the term loosely because I went, but Caleb and I were both working today, and there was just a rainy day, so there's not much work for the two of us. So then I went to go babysit for a bit so that Joe could get her hair cut. And most of that time in babysit, again, using the term loosely because this is an eight-year-old that I was watching just to make sure that the house didn't burn down. So most of that time I spent FaceTime on FaceTime having writer's time with a new friend of mine, a phenomenal writer. Y'all need to go follow Jason Gonzalez on face on the Instagram, the gram, all that good stuff. I'm not young, not at all. Anyways, like, you know how I blather on and on about the work I do, the Duchess and the Waltz and other stuff? Yeah, a fellow person of color who writes what a younger version of himself would have loved to have seen in a version that he would love to see today. And he's also a fellow actor, but his writing, like, Okay, so talent crushes are a thing, and look, I didn't spend six years figuring out I was going to major in conflict, take a whole bunch of classes about literature, <sighs> creative and dramatic writing, art history for nothing. I feel well-read and watched enough movies to say the films that he was written need to be made. I'm not even the person to tell you about them. Really, I need to find a way to have him on the show and have him explain his stories and writing up characters that reflect the type of journey he and so many others have had. See what I mean? When Once this pandemic is over, the art explosion will be phenomenal. And in just our second meeting, he has helped me also overcome some professional feedback I've gotten. Well, on two different stories, and basically asking, why should I care about these characters? That was professional feedback. Summed in a nutshell. He and I have both had a couple of conversations that I think were incredibly healing, healing to both of us. To hear from a fellow writer in comparable situations, to hear... You are enough. Your work is enough. Here's some constructive criticism to help you improve your message, but your writing is awesome. Look, this industry is hard. It's especially harder, I just turned off a light, because I'm fun like that. Look, <laughs> kind of like, what's her face on that shit? No one's gonna get that. I don't even wanna make, scrap that. Um, look, this industry is hard. It's especially harder for minorities, and it's especially harder if you're telling stories from a perspective that hasn't been hard enough. Not to mention, this is just a hard art form to exist in. It's not just one person, the writer. It's a whole assortment of people to make the product, people who deserve to be compensated, and we all deserve a way. We all deserve to find a way to make our career sustainable. 
so shout out to my writers, to my actors, to my fellow filmmakers who are still making art happen. Really just an excuse for me to drink. And not only art, but also trying to learn about the business side of art, which is equally as important. I am just continually, continuously, I can never remember which one and no one ever seems to correct me, but either way, and hopefully you will correct me, either way I continue to be impressed with the talent within my circle in this city of Atlanta. Look at y'all just don't know. Look, my boy has two features that are ready for the big leagues. Two solid, well-crafted stories ready to be made. Watch this space. Let's see if he'll come on. And with that said, what inspires you? As you all know, I'm in rewrites for the waltz. I've given myself the deadline of next year to get cameras rolling. There's still a lot up in the air. How will the Duchess do on the festival circuit? Will we find the money to make the waltz? <laughs> I just don't know. But I do know that the work of my friends continues to serve as an inspiration to me and pushes me to keep creating. Like, it's been a hard eight months of pandemic. A hard, hard eight months. There's a fly in here. Some of us have not been able to create in our usual ways because life has been disrupted. So many of us are still processing. I'm still processing. But even with the pandemic still raging, we're adjusting. We're adapting. We're here. I'm here. I am here and so are you. And clearly I'm back on the love juice. Or I'm just drunk, who knows? <laughs> Tune in tomorrow to find out. But I do feel hopeful and inspired in spite of all that's going on in the world, in this country, and even in a state. Like I talked a few episodes ago about Evie from V for Vendetta. She was made stronger. I was made stronger. We were all made stronger from what we've been through. Those of us that are still here. I don't know. I, I can't do anything about the world raging about me, but I can do as I've done in the past and use art as a way to try and heal and hopefully provide some healing and slash or entertainment to others in the process. I think that's enough rambling for today. And besides, I really didn't have much to say except I'm inspired. I'm inspired. And I want to know what's inspiring you right now. As always, keep banging lights of bane. I love you all. And until next time. Love me or not, so something is sin for all the women. Oh, <laughs> before I go, Pink, I am here. Now, we want to talk about recent Pink songs. Look, I know you didn't care for a beautiful trauma and all that jazz, but Pink, I am here. If that song does not get your blood pumping, maybe you don't have blood in you. You know who I'm talking about. Well, y'all don't, but you do. I'll see you next time.